So the final step, if you do a meta-analysis, is that you have, re have to report and publish your meta-analysis. So what I want to say here is I want to talk about the PRISMA statements and I, I want to go briefly through the structure of a publication about a meta-analysis. So first, uh, the PRISMA statement. You have done your meta-analysis just that, uh, as I explained, you have adhered to anything. You have done it properly and uh, very good. And now you want to report about it. If you want to report about a meta-analysis, you have to follow the guidelines given by the PRISMA statement. And that's just a consensus document about how to report on meta-analysis. It stands for Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analysis. Uh, you can download it from the website. Uh, most important uh, large journals have published it uh, some years ago. And it makes the way of reporting meta-analysis transparent. So this is just... Uh, uh, the, the, the PRISMA statement published in the Journal of Clinical Epidemiology, and it just indicates how you should report your meta-analysis. So it's very useful, and you just should adhere to it. And it's, if you, it, has a, it has a checklist. I won't go through all the details, but it just has a checklist with all kinds of items, and you should indicate where in your paper have you done each of these items. And that uh, on the, uh, the, 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 you have to give an abstract, an introduction, uh, the, the, all the details about the methods you have done. Some larger journals, also in the field of psychology, require that you have a form like this uh, added to your submitted paper. So you just have to fill in this form and add it as an appendix to the paper you submit. So uh, it's not only useful, because you, you can check whether you have done everything properly, but it's also required for some of the major journals in the field. Not all, but some do require this. So now, finally, I want to go through a structure for a publication. If you want to write a paper about the meta-analysis you've done, it just looks like any other scientific paper. It has an introduction, uh, parts, methods, result, discussion, and you have tables and figures. And I want to briefly go through each of these parts. So first you have to explain the, the background. Why, why is this an important problem? Um, uh, what's the relevance of it? What meta-analysis have been done before? And why is it needed that this new meta-analysis is done? What have the meta-analysis before not covered? Um, what is covered in your meta-analysis. You should end that introduction with a research question, and usually you, you, you formulate that in terms of your PICO acronym. Then the methods. You have to explain how you identify the searches, so you, you, you have to give a full search string for one of the, that's a requirement of the PRISMA statement, you have to give a full search string for one of the databases, and you have to indicate the inclusion and exclusion criteria as specifically as possible. Then you describe the data extra ex extraction and the quality assessment or the risk of bias assessment. How did you do that? Were there two different? Did you use the Cochrane risk of bias assessment tool or did you decide for another um, uh, method? Was it done by two independent researchers? Um, then you have to describe the analysis you've done. How do you calculate effect size? How did you select uh, the effect sizes from the papers? How did you calculate it? Was it a continuous outcome, Cohen's D or HSG or a relative risk or an odds ratio? Did you use the random or fixed effects model? How did you handle heterogeneity? Did you calculate uh, heter heterogeneity, the I-square? Or did you also do the Q-test for uh, heterogeneity? How did you examine publication bias? How did you do moderator and subgroup and matter regression analysis? So the, and if you report the results, you should first describe how you selected and included your study. It's a, 
according to the Prisma flowcharts. I will show later how this looks like uh, with the tables and figures. But you have to describe how many hits that you have for each database, how many uh, were removed uh, after removing of the duplicates, how many full text papers, how many met inclusion criteria, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, then you have to describe the characteristics of the 22, for example, included studies. Get, present the table of the studies you've included with the major characteristics. In the next paragraph, you, and that's the core of the meta-analysis, you report the outcomes for the pooled effect sizes. That's the core of your meta-analysis. And then finally, you report the results of the other analysis, the subgroup meta and meta regression analysis, publication bias, maybe you're focused on a subgroup of studies, or maybe you have removed some studies, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the discussion, again, is very much in line with other papers. You give a summary of the main results, you summarize what this adds to existing knowledge, you give implications for research and practice of what you find. You indicate what future research is needed. And very important, many people still forget that to include that in their papers, the limitations of your study. Just take a step back, think, look at your own study, and try to be as critical as possible. And say, what are the weak points of my own study? And by doing that, you show that you are a good researcher. And I see too many, pa I review too many papers in which people just don't, don't report the limitations of their own study. And this is a core element of any paper. So which tables and figures should you, should you add? Well, first you should add a flow, car, flow chart of the occlusion of studies. So it's also called the Prisma flow diagram. And this is what Prisma says. So you have to report the number of included abstracts, uh, then you uh, uh, remove duplicates. You read the abstracts and you remove the ones who are clearly not related to your research question. You don't have to indicate the reasons for that. But then you retrieve the full text papers. So the one, for example, 100 full text PDFs you retrieve and you select 22 studies from that. You have to indicate reasons for exclusion from those 78 studies you did not include. So you have to give reasons for that. And then you say, well, in the end, we included 22 studies from uh, in our meta-analysis. The other thing you have to report in your meta-analysis is the forest plot. As I said, this is the core of your meta-analysis. So you have to report your forest plot. And uh, this is again just that same forest plot I showed again, just to see how it looks like. What you also should give is a table with the selected characteristics of included studies. And as I said, there is no clear rule for what you should report there, uh, what you should add to that table. But this is just, you know, an example for studies that you report how they were recruited, the target groups, the different conditions included in the study, the N per condition, was the treatment delivered individual or in group. You could add the number of sessions. You can add, for example, a column with the validity with a plus or minus or question mark for the validity of each of the study. But this is, you know, this is, uh, there, as I said, there is no straight, strict rule for this. And then what I think is very useful is that you also give a table summarizing the results of your meta-analysis. So this is, for example, a study on uh, psychotherapy for depression versus pill placebo. I haven't given all the subgroup analysis, but here you see 12 studies with the effect size, with I-square and a 95 confidence interval with the numbers needed to be treated. Um, what happens if you only use the Hamilton depression scale as an outcome measure? What happens if you only use the back depression inventory as an outcome measure? And you see here also the moderator analysis for here, for example, the type of therapy, CBT versus other, 
and the type of recruitment, only from clinical samples or also from other samples. And you can see here that you can enter there also the p-value. If you, if you enter a table like this, this will be very, um, this, this is a good summary next to the forest plot of all the other analysis you've done. So that's for the reader, this is also a good summary of your full meta-analysis. So the key point here is uh, that the PRISMA statement is not only a useful tool to uh, check whether you have done everything in your meta-analysis properly, but it's also needed if you want to submit it to major, major journals in our field. And if you write a paper, just think that it's an, uh, it's, has the same basic structure like any other scientific paper. So what I, what I tried to, have tried to do in this course is go through with you through all the steps needed to do a simple meta-analysis. I first explained why meta what meta-analysis are and what they are, why they are important. And as I said, you need meta-analysis because of the explosion of science to summarize what we know in subfields. I also said that if you do a meta-analysis, you have to start with a good research question. And you can use the PICO acronym for that. You have to define the participants, the intervention, the comparison group, and the outcomes. You also have to think which databases you will search in. So which are the bibliographical databases you will do your searches in. And you should at least do searches in PubMed, PsycInfo, and the Cochrane database. But please also look at other possibilities to identify studies. If you do searches, you can work with logical operators and truncation words, etc., etc. But if you can, ask a library for help. In the selection of studies, you preferably work with two researchers. And uh, you should carefully select the studies which you retrieve in full text. And you have to have clear inclusion and exclusion criteria from the papers you will include in your final meta-analysis. If you have your final data set look carefully at the risk of bias of each of these studies because that defines the scope and the value of your final meta-analysis. And you have to look at all the um, uh, outcome measures to get all the effect sizes from those uh, studies and you can pool them, uh, preferably according to the random effects model. And don't forget that heterogeneity the way and the, 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 the scale to which these studies are indeed one cohesive group of studies is key to understanding meta-analysis and examining sources of heterogeneity uh, through moderator analysis, through looking at outliers or meta-regression analysis has to be done in a proper meta-analysis. And if you have done all that, I think you, sh you have done a great job and you should publish your meta-analysis. Thank you for your attention.